another sacred cow, and I wrote about this in my email to you. One of the truths that I learned, and I was really allergic to learning this one because it is so sacred. Hope is the measure of future regrets. Hope is thought of as something that can only be good. But maybe that's just a a dressed up way of saying expectation or even a chase of sorts. What, uh, what, What is your understanding of hope? It's just more pie in the sky. It's one, just because you hope for something doesn't mean it's going to happen. Now, if you, if you set the things in place for it to happen, then you set them in place. But hope has nothing to do with anything. What's hope going to do? You hoping for something doesn't make it any more likely of it becoming true. So, Everyone is conditioned to like things that are flowery and glee and nice and have a nice scent and pretty words and they look good on the rectangular shape of a bumper sticker and they're just nice. And that's fine. Once again, no evil. It's just pie in the sky. It's just, it's just a bunch of niceties. Hope for this. Be kind. Be compassionate. Be this. Be that. As if you walk around with 95 switches and you forgot to turn them on. And now turn on the hope switch and then the compassion switch and then the <laughs> kindness switch. Oh, I forgot to turn. It's like you're full of, it's like you're a, a breaker box. <laughs> and oh, I forgot to, oh, I forgot. I'm glad you reminded me from the kindness. I left that one off last night. It's juvenile. If things worked that way, that someone says, be hopeful and be kind and be compassionate, then everybody would be hopeful, kind, and compassionate. And there would be no policemen and there would be no courtrooms. He would just say, did you do that? And the guy would say, yes, I stole this and that. Okay, then you're in jail. Thank you very much. Okay. There's no reason for lawyers and and no room for anything, right? If all those things worked, then there'd be no reason for anything. Everything would be nice and he'd be compassionate to you and you'd be mindful to him and he'd be, it's, it's just fairy tales and it's just fairy tales for adults. That's, that's all it is. It's instead of cartoon characters, they implant real flesh and blood human beings. And, you know, instead of, instead of having diagrams in the, in the pop out picture books, they just put it in paragraph form. It's just tabloids and fairy tales because it sounds nice and everyone wants to hear nice things and do nice things. And that's fine. Never will you hear me say that you shouldn't do that. It's, but it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't take away from the fact that it's pie in the sky, but people want pie in the sky. In my own life, I've noticed hope often getting in the way. It's almost a, a clutter of sorts. I remember when I used to play basketball back in high school, you, you would hope that you make the free throw, right? But you hope so much that you it actually impedes your ability to make the free throw, but I think that happens, that permeates a bunch of other areas in my life. I hope this person likes me. I hope I can accomplish this. I hope I get this award or reward. Hoping for the applause makes the applause much less worthwhile. It it almost, it's like putting a wet blanket on it. If you, if I need it, and then get it, then it's simply fulfilling the the expectation that I had. And so I wanted to pivot to beliefs because what I realized pretty quickly when I stumbled across your words, 
Kapil, is that I had a whole lot of beliefs about the world and I pretended as though those were the truth because they felt so real to me. My beliefs must be true, right? Otherwise, why would I have them as a belief? And over the last couple of years, I've gotten really good at letting go of beliefs, setting them down is probably a way to talk about it. But I do find myself picking them up again and again. And can you help me understand what's behind that? Well, you like anything that's yours. Mm. I mean, if, if something, if either something is true or it's not true, what does it matter what you believe? What does it matter what your opinion is? Of, of what value is that, aside from trying to win some idiotic conversation in some idiotic party with a bunch of idiots talking idiocy? Who cares what you believe? Of, of, of what, what, what two cents does it matter what your opinion is? And, and, and once again, because everyone's conditioned, they're going to think that I, I mean that you should be mindful of others' opinions. No. I'm saying others' opinions are stupid too. Everyone's stupid. They're all stupid. <laughs> Either something is true or it's not true. What you believe and what you opine, who cares? You can believe that the sun rises in the north. Okay, you're welcome to believe that. Once again, no evil. So what? Okay, good for you. Your opinion is that the moon is purple with green stripes. Great. Good for you. What does that have to do with reality? So then it just comes down to Are you more interested in opinion and belief? Or are you more interested in reality and truth? And there's no way that anyone is not going to hear the fact or the the notion that I'm implying something. That I'm implying that you should be interested in reality and truth. And that's where my stuff differs. I don't imply anything. Once again, I don't care. It is simply, I can't say a single thing without there being a feeling that I'm giving a hidden, I, I, I'm leading you toward doing something. And, and the reason that that happens is because every single human being that you speak to in your entire life, every single book that you read in your entire life absolutely is trying to lead you somewhere, has a message for you has something for you to get, has a take-home message. I don't have any message. I don't care if you look for truth or you care for belief. I am just simply making the absolute fact statement with no judgment, no leading, no implication that are, if you are more interested in belief and, and opinion, then that's what you will value. And if you're more interested in reality and truth, that's what you, were, that's what you will value. What, what you will value. And you shouldn't be more interested in one or the other. You are whatever you are. Personally, I'm interested in ceasing the suffering. Now, a lot of that suffering is psychological. As I mentioned in my email to you, I gone through some a bit of a health crisis the last four years. And so there's actual physical suffering there, but it's always amplified by the mental anguish and the hopes and, of course, the expectations of fixes, cures, literal prescriptions um, in the, the pharmaceutical sense. And I found that quite often those things block the truth. 